Assalamu alaikum. Once again with you from nlpmantra.com and today I am going to do a very different show. A show that you're not normally used to. Uh, actually, it was there before the entrepreneur show. So I'm going to re re revive that with a person who has been an inspiration for a lots and lots and lots of people around the world. Uh, he has actually uh, done wonders in his career. Uh, he has a very, very, very interesting story to share with us. His name is, and let me bring him online with me, Winston Ji. Hi, Winston. How are you? Hello. Hi, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> you always remind you, me of Muhammad Ali because the name yeah, is I'm exactly sure. Muhammad I'm, Ali, the fighter. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you don't want to have a bout with me. <laughs> no, no. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Winston, first of all, uh, thank you very much for your uh, time and uh, for gracing this uh, live uh, broadcast with me. Uh, I've been following you a lot on the Facebook. I have been seeing a lot of things that you have been doing, which are amazing. And I want my people, my colleagues, my friends to know more about you. Uh, viewers, the, 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 the topic that we had kept for the day was from debt to jail. To one, and then to 120 million business and that too in a flash of a time and that's what Winston is all about and he has been using NLP since 2009 and how NLP has helped him in, in, in getting out of all of these things that was just a coincidence I didn't know about that earlier so Winston I would like my viewers to know who is Winston uh, who is Winston okay well, I, if I could, you know, the best way I can show you is through my Facebook profile. Because if you actually see my Facebook profile, uh, that will give you a brief overview about me. But since we don't, we can't show the, I can't share my screen on a Facebook profile. I will just introduce a bit more myself. So my name is. I'm just. Uh, I'm not a guru, and I always get a cringe when people call me gurus because I don't like to be called guru. <laughs> I'm just someone who. Is, I'm just any ordinary human being like you and me. And it's just that I have gone through life, uh, I have some experiences in life that most people have not gone through. And that's, that's what I have to offer, which is my experience. So, uh, so a bit background myself, I'm 42. Although I look like my 20s, <laughs> I do have my <laughs> secrets. <laughs> and I, and I, I'm a father of three. I have three daughters, three girls. Uh, I have a pair of twins that are 10, 10 and 6 years old. And uh, so I've been married since 2005 uh, to the same woman. And I love my family very much. I'm a, very much a family man. And uh, so I started out uh, with NLP because I was in depression. Um, I grew up in a family where my father was, would get drunk and I would get beaten up by him. And sometimes I would get beaten up and thrown out of the house naked. I think a lot of people, maybe in the past, only the past people would have such traumatic experience. So that was a very traumatic experience for me. It, it, I, I would go to school with like cane marks on my hands and kids would make fun of me and call me naughty and even teachers would prejudge me, you know. You know how a lot of people, if you know about NLP, people have presupposition. So yeah. they look at you, they judge you immediately, right? So I had cane marks on my, on my hands and so the teachers would prejudge that this boy is naughty and then they will be, have that presupposition and they will be on a Look out for me for naughty things. <laughs> so whatever, if I did something wrong, it will exaggerate in your mind. If you know about NLP, right? Because they mm -hmm. already have a presupposition about me. So that didn't help me because I was just a kid. I didn't know anything. So when when kid caught me, I get punished. That makes me don't want to go to school. And that affected my grades. And then that makes me think about myself that maybe I'm lousy academically. I'm not good enough. And then even when I went to school, I dropped out of school because I couldn't do well. I always, not that I didn't want to, I always wanted to do well and I look at people who do well, look up to people who do well in school. It's just, I don't know why, I just could not, I have fear when it comes to exams. Maybe I got beaten up too many times. <laughs> so, uh, so I got beat the crap out of me. So it's the emotional trauma that I had. I went to depression in the army and I used to lock myself up in a room for a few days because I was in depression. And I, 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 and my first book that I read was Tony Robbins' book, Unleash the Giant Within. So that and and and, and 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 sorry, let me let me let me just add something here, which if I'm not wrong, you recently shared the stage with Tony Robbins as well. Yes, right. Yeah. So twenty years later, <laughs> I shared the same stage with Tony Robbins. I was a speaker. I think one speaker after him, you know, uh, on the same platform, and I got to talk to him, and it was like. 
Wow, it's like 20 years ago, I wrote your book when I was in, I read your book when I was in depression and now I get to like speak on the same stage today. That's like, wow. <laughs> so, so anyway, yeah, so that was um, a little bit about my past. So I read the book and, uh, and I, I start working on myself. So I went to attend a certified NLP practitioner course because I realized that maybe I'm broken inside. I need, I need to change something in me. So that get me on the path of personal development to learn about NLP. And I realized that I was anchored into my past. And it's true because our subconscious self, it's, it's anchored to the past, right? And, uh, but it was not a, it's not like a journey that you, you just attend a three-day course and you just get it. Sometimes you still need a reminder. It's, it's a little bit like religion. Like if you are in, whether you're Muslim, you're Christian, you're Buddhist or Taoist or anything. I mean, those are pretty good. They teach you good stuff, I'm sure. So uh, I believe, uh, are you a Muslim? Are you? Yes, I am. Name is Muhammad. Yes, I am. Muslim. Yes, so in the, yes, in the Quran, of course, they teach you good things. They teach you to be a good person. And that's why you need to go and pray every day or five times a day so you don't forget. <laughs> and we will forget. Even if you pray five times a day, you still forget. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, so and if you know something, it doesn't mean that you attend one time, you, you get it. You, you will have light bulb, you will get it, but you still need constant reminder, right? So mm -hmm. along the way, I, I would still, still, I would say it's a learning journey for me. So uh, unfortunately, uh, during a period of time, I had low self-esteem. I tried doing sales. Uh, I realized that I have a lot of bad image about sales, like salesman. It's like you're trying to sell something. It's very sleazy. And, and, and that's why for eight months, I tried to do sales for financial services. I had zero sales <laughs> because wow. I had a lot of bad self-image about sales. And that made me also procrastinate. Like I had a wrong meaning attached to sales. It's like, oh, sales is bad. It's like telling lies. You're not, uh, you, you're a snake man, snakes selling, you know, snake oil. <laughs> and that was mm -hmm. the deterring self-image I have about sales. And that was the anchor that I had. So if you know about NLP, anchoring, you know, if yes, you anchor to right. the wrong stuff, it will disempower you. So you can try as hard as you like, you will disempower you. <laughs> that's so good. I took me a some time. I, I I went through eight months of selling and I sold nothing. My mom is the only customer I have. <laughs> so I told my then I said, you know, some of us what we do is instead of solving the problem, we avoid it. So I tried to avoid it. So I said, you know, maybe face to face not for me. So in 2002, I decided I still want to be successful financially. So I decided I go online marketing. So I started affiliate marketing in 2002 because I don't have to meet people. <laughs> yes, so you can you can avoid that eye contact, right? Yeah, I can avoid the eye contact. I can avoid the you know the 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 limiting beliefs that I have. <laughs> That's yeah. true. So I to avoid that, but I still want success. So I, I you know I found internet as, as the way to go, and um, yeah. So basically, that's what I did. So we have a question from a friend, uh, learn magnetic yeah. marketing. <laughs> magnetic yeah, marketing. So anyway, yeah, so how to become a magnet to people. Okay, I'll, I'll come to that later on, okay? So mm -hmm. what I did was uh, I went to, uh, oh yeah, I went into online marketing. So with that, I had to learn, I did read a lot about salesmanship in print. I had to learn copywriting. So that made me learn a little bit about salesmanship in print. At least I don't have to be there. I can sell without me being there. So that was ideal for me. So that's mm -hmm. when I learned a little bit more about sales psychology. And I read books like Zig Ziglar, uh, you know, Brian Tracy, and many other big boys that was talking about sales. And but I want to use in terms of online marketing sales. And I was and I created a blog uh, on teaching people how to start their own website, how to digitize their business. And mm -hmm. I was making six figures just from that blog. Uh, every day I had constantly had sales nonstop, you know, <laughs> on my blog. And then what happened was 2003, 2004, Google changed the algorithm and my website had got slapped <laughs> and it dropped from like $9,000 every month uh, and it dropped all the way down to like a few hundred dollars a month, like $200 wow. a month. My website told me, because in Google, you only have nine positions. Like if you, you want to target the word NLP mentor or NLP mm -hmm. training, it's, it's to get onto the first page of Google, it's not easy. <laughs> I would think that Pakistan maybe is easy. I don't know. But in US, in, in, in some parts of the world where everybody knows about online marketing, which is you can learn that easily on, on YouTube, it, you only can compete nine positions. So you really have to be really, really good and really put in a lot of effort. Last time, a 500 word would get you on top. 
Now, even 3,000 words doesn't get you on top. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but of course, the landscape has also changed. Uh, yeah. The number of people using Google has increased. How so? So is social media as well. So now there's social media as another outlet because back then there was no social media. The only yep, way you could true. get people organically was actually just through... Um, now there's so many. There's TikTok, there is Instagram, there is Snapchat, there is LinkedIn, you know. But in the past, you only had Google. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so I, I was okay. I was like in the early part of those days, you know. Okay, and, Vishnu, uh, we'll, we'll 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 move to that journey in in a bit, as you said, because I yes. want to uh, I want to keep the best for the for the little while uh, that. Uh, but I want to ask one very important question. Yeah, sure. People here think if I fail, that's the end of the world, and people think failure is not is not good. People around the world I do sessions with and they say, oh, I'm a failure. And in my opinion, I'll tell you my opinion that I want your uh, stay, say on that. OK. Yeah. Uh, uh, my in my opinion, it is failing, being depressed. There is no harm. It is very natural. Actually, we all should. Number one, there is nothing called failure. It's a learning experience. So I believe I also sometimes go down. I have downs. I have ups. It's not going down is not bad, but the ability to bounce back and going up is what makes you different than others. That is my take on that. And that is what NLP actually has taught me. You were asking me a question uh, earlier that what is uh, what I what did I take from NLP? So this one of the things that I learned from NLP was that going down is OK. So when you are down, people tell you, oh, think positive. But nobody tells you how to think positive, how to get up. So this is my take on failures and being able to get up. What do you think about it? OK, so having read NLP like over 20 years ago and uh, reading a lot of NLP and hypnotherapy, affirmation, scripting to override your beliefs, um, I think at the very core for me personally, uh, I think that NLP is about framing and being aware that whatever situation you are in right now, it's, it's your story you're telling yourself that you are interpreting it. And that story that you're interpreting it of a certain kind of situation, there are two, there are many ways you can look at it. It's just like an, an elephant, right? So if you look mm -hmm. at elephant from different side of the elephant, you would describe the elephant differently. <laughs> That's so, right. So, so it's like, so basically every situation, every situation that you face in life, like for me, I was in six figure debt, right? And by the way, the debt wasn't even created by me. It's, it's my dad. My dad had cancer. He passed away. His business failed. Uh, and the debt was carried forward to my mom because my mom signed as a guarantor for my mom, my dad's loans. So when my dad passed on, my mom was choking the loan and my mom had to tell me about the loan. So I was, and that, I had to carry the family burden of a six-figure debt, right? So in that situation, I think different people would see it differently. I've got people, I ask my friends, if you're in a situation, what would you feel? Some say, oh, I, I would like, I would panic and I would, I don't know what I would do. I would maybe go depression. Maybe I would like tell my mom, just declare bankruptcy. Some of them would be like, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how to find a way out. I feel helpless, you know. So for me, uh, I think for me it was what the anchor that you need to have, the anchor. That it must be an anchor that keeps, there must be a belief that you have that can anchor you in the right way. So for example, in that situation, my anchor was the belief in, because uh, I read the Bible every day. So my belief was that God is for me, not against me. And that's what's mm -hmm. written in the Bible. I think in the school run as well, right? Absolutely. God is for you. He's not against you, right? Absolutely. And, and, and when you, when I anchor to that, that belief, because I feel I believe in God, so therefore I anchor the belief. You've got to find a, a belief that you can, you can hold on to like uh like for example you have nlp mantra right like a mantra yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right yeah. like a mantra because there are, there, there are some limiting beliefs and there are some empowering beliefs so we, this is a beautiful narration viewers how to change your limiting belief into an empowering belief limiting belief limits you that you cannot grow and empowering belief makes you grow yeah please go ahead so yeah so you need to find an anchor to a belief that empowers you so for me Something that I cannot deny is I cannot say what God says in the Bible is wrong. I cannot say what says in the Quran is wrong, okay? God is for me, not against me. And mm -hmm. in, I think in the Old Testament, which is, I think, same in the Quran, I think um, we have the same version. The Old Testament is the same. 
And uh, it also says God, Joshua, I think Joshua, uh, inside it says that uh, my plans are to prosper you. You know, not to, you know, not to hold you yes. back, not to, not to curse you, it's prosper you. And yes, that's sir. when I start to, I anchor that. I say, okay, so in my situation now, how does how can God prosper me? So I see that situation as, okay, I've got to go out. Maybe there's a solution out there. Maybe God is, so I saw that situation as God wants me to go out and do something. I, I trust that is showing me the way how to solve it. I trust Thanks. there is a way out there. Okay. So you're going to have some, so sometimes we look into ourselves. We don't have the ability because we look at our past. If in your past, you've never in six figure debt before and you never got out of it before, obviously you have no experience on how to not knowing how to do that. So how do you move forward when you don't have experience? So for me, it's having a faith level, a belief that's higher than my limiting beliefs. That's true. Okay. So my belief uh, that was higher than my only limiting beliefs that God is for me. Mm -hmm. So with that, I will go out and I would start looking for a solution. Mm -hmm. I started going out to look, and, and lo and behold, I did find a solution, which was not a right solution, actually. <laughs> because I was working in a company, and I, I hacked the website, and I took six figures from there, <laughs> which then wow. ended up me two years in prison. <laughs> two years in prison? Wow. Yes, in Singapore, so, right? And six-figure death with two years in prison, Normally, people would say it's the the end of the world, isn't it? Yeah. So it's like it's like I I have a shit, and then I got a six figure to cover the shit, and it brought me into another shit, <laughs> which is in a hole. Yeah. You know, I can so, I can very much relate to that, uh, Winston, because I at one point in time uh, back in two thousand nine, when you were doing your NLP, that was a time when I lost eight million dollars, and from eight million to zero on the road you know that is uh, my story is there on the youtube as well uh, that was quite a journey and and that was quite something and, and i can very 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 well relate to what you are saying please go ahead yeah okay so shit after shit so i covered the shit with another layer of shit <laughs> so it was downhill for me you know i was like god where where are you and then when i go to prison of course i cry and at the end of the day i still go back and say where is my purpose here like I still, it's sometimes it's so difficult to still trust in that situation. You know, if you guys are going through difficult times, I can perfectly understand it's, it's not easy. It's not like you just have to psych yourself up and you can get out of that. It's not easy. Okay, so I do perfectly understand. So I, because I've been through that and I, I believe Muhammad Ali have went through that eight minutes. Come on, think about that, right? <laughs> some people would have jumped off the building. I mean, there's some yes. people who lost not eight million, like two million or one million, they jump off the building. <laughs> That's correct. Okay? Yeah, so That's... so for me, so so for me, if not for my faith, my faith, it it it, it helped me overcome myself. Stop looking at myself. I stop looking at myself and start looking out of myself, a higher power that I can believe in. And sometimes some of you might need a coach or someone to talk to, like Muhammad Ali, right? You 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 maybe you need someone to talk to because God did not make us to be alone. It's you know sometimes it's good you talk to counsel, even kings. You read the Old Testament, right? You read the Quran. Every one of them has an advisor. Every of the kings always have a few advisors. Always. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. And that is very, very important. And we do not value that. Unfortunately, today, we think, oh, I know everything. I don't need somebody. And Mr. Google is there. He will teach me everything. Yeah. <laughs> but you also this... need to know uh, what to Google and if what you Google is real or not right or you don't know right absolutely so it's always good to we just high tech is good but we still need high touch we still need that human element i mean if not then we should be in matrix you know watch the movie matrix we should just absolutely. plug the wire in and that's it <laughs> everything will be fixed great yeah. so, uh, so how, how long did it take you to recover from to come out of the jail and, and pay your debts and build this business now i want to talk about the business yeah. so how, yeah. first of all how long did it take to you to come out of that situation okay for me coming out from prison it took me three months to hit back five figures a month wow three okay. months yeah, three you months. must be a magician oh, wait, then. Wait, wait, not yet, not yet. Okay, not yet. Be okay, so I need to tell you that in between, when I was when I was hacking the website, I took six figures. I, I there was 
a period that was under investigation before I go to prison. So there is an investigation period, that one year investigation. I went and do real estate, okay? Because I needed six figures. I was thinking I was going to be in prison for 44 years because I had 44 charges. So I thought like I would be ready for 44 years and my wife was pregnant with my twin daughters. And you wow. can just imagine that, okay? At a point in time, I was thinking my whole world is collapsed. Like, that's the end of my life. It's the end. But that one year, what I did was I just said, if that's the end of my life, and that's my story, okay? That's my story in my mind. All of you were probably in the same situation. You probably have different stories. But my story has empowered me to unleash my potential. So the story that you tell yourself is really very important, okay? So the story I was telling myself is this. I'm going to go to jail for four years. I need to feed my family. If anything happens to me, that's the most responsible thing you can do as a man. If not, you're not a man. So wow. I went out and I said, I need to get six figures for my family. So with like an innocent person, I just go out because I had no choice. I had no choice. So I had to find how to make six figures. So my aim was six figures. And I, I realized that in real estate, one of the fastest way to do six figures is doing real estate. So not knowing how I was going to do it, I just do it. Uh, a lot of people, because you have a choice, so you have a lot of considerations. But I had no choice. Mm. So that was that helped me. So I went all out, and I, and I, I just went out. And I, I, because I read a lot of sales books before that already, right? And I've done enough sales online to know that you have to be, you have a lot of large numbers. So I just told myself, if I can talk to as many people as I can, if I show people at the houses as many as I can, I would definitely close something. Definitely. So with that belief, I just went all out. If that is the law, that's the belief, I just went all out. Mm -hmm. So I went all out nonstop. You know, my first month, I closed one sale. I make six figures in commission. Profits. Wow. First month. <laughs> and then I was able to, the best week I ever had, like in four days, I sold 24 houses in four days. That's interesting. So that, and then after I went to prison. <laughs> <laughs> and then the prison actually was a learning experience again for you, isn't it? Yeah. So I reframed my prison. I told myself, okay, this prison day, prison time. I, at first I was, of course, upset. I was crying. But after a while, I started reading the, reading my, your Quran or the Bible again. And I realized, okay, so every day I read and reflect on what God says. I reflect, reflect. And uh, like a mantra, you know? So the, the Bible was like a mantra for me. So I, I reflected and, and God was telling me, I'm still for you. I'm still, you know, cannot be lying. So he showed me that people who went to prison, like Joseph went to prison. Uh, you know, uh, 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 Moses was being pursued after King David was, uh, you know, uh, he committed a lot of crime, but God could still restore them. So I realized that every person that God has used, even Abraham himself, did something wrong, right? He even prostituted his wife. Mm -hmm. Right, and yet, and yet, God was still God will still forgive and restore him. So I say, God, I repent what I did. I know you will restore me. So with that, that gives me faith by reading the stories in the in the Bible. So that that helped me, and I told myself, I said, okay, I'm going to, I believe, and then I started reading a lot of books on entrepreneurs who have overcome the biggest obstacle in life. So I read about Richard Branson, how he used to have a child, and he would he would live in a car. With a child, and yet how he was able to overcome that. So I read a lot of books in a prison. So I told myself the time in prison, two years, is for me to attend a university where I can focus on learning. That was how I reframed. <laughs> amazing. And this is an amazing use of NLP. Reframing is one of the techniques that we teach in NLP. And I know, I mean, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of people when I do sessions with them and I use the reframing, they themselves sometimes can't believe. And the reframes that you have been telling me are amazing that the same prison became a university of hard knocks university of learning so you are there to learn and what did you learn out of those two years so i, I read a lot of books most of my i didn't really talk much with a lot of prisoners but I, I learned that a lot of prisoners are not bad as the way movies portray them to be they're actually you normal person like you and me who have bad anchoring in the past which mm -hmm. made them uh, do things that that are not right, but in that moment, like for example, I met this guy who molested little girls. 
And the reason why he was he was doing that was because when he was a bit younger, he was exposed to pornography from the parents, and uh, and 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 he was and that dominated his mind, like anchoring mm. dominated. So when you repeat something, and that, and emotions keeps anchoring that, and you keep repeating anchoring repeating and anchoring, it becomes such a strong anchor that the moment like like you cannot control yourself. Mm-hmm. It's like so some people when they were young they were afraid of cockroaches, you know. Yes. So when you see cockroaches, you go ah, that's like a the anchor has been so strong that immediately when you have a trigger, the emotional level is ten. <laughs> that's correct. That's correct. That's absolutely right, uh, Winston. And then uh, from there onwards, uh, you came out. You learned. Yes. Did you then, you, course, you, uh, yeah, I came out. I had a lot of hope. I told my wife I was going to do a fifty million dollar business. And what did she say? And she didn't say anything. She was. She was. She was not discouraged. I. I thank God my wife is quite. She's a woman of faith, so she is always very encouraging. She never puts me down for my ideas or anything. Else. She always believes in me, and I really thank God for that because that two years, my twin daughters, uh, I missed the first two years of their life, and she was, you know. Um, she was looking after them alone, and it's not easy looking after two babies. And uh, of course, I want to thank my my mom and also my laws at both sides. They're very really supportive, uh, even though I went through that period. I'm thankful that none of my family members uh, looked down on me, and they were very encouraging me. So I really thank God for that. It's it's really a blessing to have a family like that supports you. So when it came out, I was full of hope. I said, you know what? I think God is definitely. There is a reason. So I interpret it as this, that every bad experience I go through in life is meant to be a blessing. So that's Absolutely. my reframing, right? Every a bad experience. Because I read the Bible and I realize that, hey, every person in the Bible went through tough times before they actually became a blessing to people. Absolutely. And and that's what uh, Napoleon Hill says in his book. Um, uh, Think and Grow Rich? Uh, no, no, no. The other one, uh, The Devil... Uh, uh, wow! I just slipped the names of the book slipped from mind. But his statement is that every diversity comes with a seed of an equal or better opportunity. That's right. Yes, yes. So in that is he, mantra. You know, that's good to reflect yeah. every day. To in reflect. which he introduced the devil. You know, that's what he's saying. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so for me, I I believe that every that every circumstance, every bad things that happens to you, instead of saying that oh I'm so stupid I lost that eight million, I believe in that losing the eight million. There's a lot of wisdom there. Because it is in that pain, in your pain, that you find wisdom. You know, yep, uh, a lot of us don't see it that way, but I see it that way. I see that when you make mistake, you're not stupid. I'm I'm seeing that when you make the mistake, it makes you wiser. You see, Absolutely. it's the same thing, same circumstance, but when you look at it differently, one moves you backward, one moves you forward. So, which do you want to choose? Absolutely. And that's why it's your story. It depends on what you tell yourself. Yes. That's it's your story. I, 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 yes. It's all your story, that, what, what you're telling yourself. So for me, my story empowers me to move forward. And so when I came out, I, I said I was going to do something. Uh, you know, I was going to build a business. So within three months, uh, one of my, I was open to a lot of ideas. I was positive. And when you are open ideas, you're opos- in the state of positivity. Believe me or not, you will see opportunities that you would not otherwise see if you were in a negative state of mind. Absolutely. So if you were in a positive state of mind, not based on empty positiveness, but there is a there is an anchor on your positivity, like a solid anchor. So my solid anchor is God is for me. <laughs> Absolutely. God is with that on your solid, side. Yeah, with a solid anchor, not a not a like a like not positive psychology that you don't believe in. <laughs> Right, a lot of people have anchors. They have, they have positive psychology, but they don't believe in that. So if you don't believe in that and you use that all the time, it's not going to help you. You got to anchor to something that you truly believe that's undeniable. And 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 this is the best one. Remember, God is with you, not against you. I love yes, this. Yes, God is with you. He's not against you. He created yeah. you. He loves you. He loves you, and he loves you more. In 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 Quran, uh, we say that in Islam, that uh, God loves us seventy times more than our mothers. Yeah, you know, so that's, that's right. That's 70 mothers, and if one mother yes. cannot be in pain, so imagine how can... And that should be a mantra on your wall every day, if you're a Muslim. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Great. Uh, that was uh, really encouraging and motivating. You know, and people say, 
uh, I need a motivational speaker. I said, you know, you cannot be, I, there is no in human in this world who can be a motivator if you do not have the fire inside you. So the fire has to be lit inside you. Then you can find for a motivator or a mentor. I would say a mentor who can actually guide you to the right direction. And yes. that's what we say, you know, so amazing. Uh, so you, Vincent, now tell me a little bit about your business. What do you do and how did you build it up? And what did you, what magic did you do in three months that you set up a $120 million uh, business? No, three months was not $120 million. Three months was oh, okay. five figure, five, five figures. Figure. Yeah, I'd like go five figures US dollars in a, in a month, right? I started from there first. Uh, so that was when I came out of prison was 2012. Mm -hmm. I went in 2010. So in 2012, when I came out, I, 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 I was thinking, what can, what can I do? But one of the things that I do know that I love doing is I do love training people and teaching them because before that, I had a lot of online marketing experience already. And I did very well in real estate because I used online marketing to get my leads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so every experience that you, that you go through in the past is meant to help you. It's actually linked chain, I believe your past work experience has helped you link to where you are today absolutely it's all related absolutely yeah you can only see it right now going backwards but you cannot see moving forward that's true yeah that's so my, my internet marketing experience for, has led me to be able to apply on my real estate and then because of my real estate experience and my results has led me to come out and start a training school so i started training realtors how to get leads from online that was that was how i made my first five figures wow that's interesting and how did you do that and that's so the million dollar, that's the million was, dollar question yeah that's by by the grace of god okay so of course play faith right so what happened was because my previous manager that i joined when i was doing very well in real estate i was under this manager he still think that i really have a lot of skills and talent so when i came out uh we were discussing like i could not go back and do real estate because i had a like a black record, you know, it's hard to get a job in Singapore when you have a, you went to prison before, you know, uh, it's not as forgiving as, uh, yeah, you have to declare. And when you declare, you're definitely in a disadvantage. So, so I couldn't go back and do real estate. I thought to myself and I said, why don't I, uh, so my manager said, why don't you teach uh, realtors how to do online marketing? Cause that's what you did. It was amazing. So I thought, yeah, why not? So I was open to the idea. So, um, no experience in training people in online marketing, no experience in doing that. But I just thought, okay, I'll just share my story first. And then I'll just go online. I'll, I, and my manager connected me with other the managers who in real estate. And I'll do a talk and share my story to motivate their, uh, their, their agents, their agencies, right? So I motivated them and they all tell me that they want to learn. So I started a three-day course. I said, okay, then I'll, do, I'll share my story. And then after that, the, they want to come for my three-day course, so I start teaching. That's how my business started. And there were months that I hit. There were weeks, like one week, I will have like 40, 20 students. Each student is about two thousand dollars. That's forty thousand US, forty thousand Singapore dollars a week, which is about, uh, I would say, thousand uh, five hundred US dollars times twenty. That's thirty thousand US a week, uh, just for my three-day training. So, uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. And, uh, but of course I had to, I, and I thought to myself, I want to have another kid, but that was really made me fulfilled, but I was so busy. I didn't have time for my family as well. Cause at night I still have a lot of customer support. You know, when they ask me their website, uh, if you have this problem, what should I do? My paid advertising, am I using the right words for Google? So a lot of people ask me a lot of questions. So I didn't really have time for my kids and I want to have another kid. So that was when I decided that I was thinking, I want to go back online again. But this time around, I want to do something. So I went to e-commerce. And uh, I'm not going to go into too much details because that would take a long time. But I went to do e-commerce. And through trial and error, through a lot of uh, learning process, I, just, I learned how I can build an e-commerce that can last long. I would say this business probably can last for 10, 20 years. And, and it will run by itself like autopilot. So I, it's called self-growing e-commerce. So my e-commerce business, I grew to hundred over hundred million dollars with zero advertising. Wow. Yeah, but and I was doing advertising before for my for my e-commerce business before this model came about. But the previous model, I did advertising to learn from that prop that mistake that led me to know how to solve this mistake. So, so, so every I always tell people every problem you're facing presents itself 
to make you wiser <laughs> absolutely absolutely my friend absolutely and and that is what is important now uh, let let's take one question uh, which was there uh, Sul from sultan who welcomed you earlier uh, magnetic marketing and he's also he has he had a comment on your google thing that google maybe they want a share from your sales so that's <laughs> well, why I they really changed the advertising fee you know because they won't take my they won't want to share because i paid for advertising <laughs> that's how they make money right <laughs> okay so teach them uh, basics of magnetic marketing okay so first of all let's define what exactly is magnetic magnetic marketing it's like attracting people to come to you right so uh, it's like a woman who's very attractive and men are attracted to that woman. But the fact is that not every man will be attracted to that kind of woman. Because like example, you could have like, uh, not to be racist, but I don't think you guys are attracted to a woman that's a Chinese woman that's nice, that's uh, quite good. Sometimes, uh, you know, it'll be not the same race. So you're not, you feel uncomfortable. So even then itself, uh, you can't attract everybody. So the first way to be to know about how to attract people to you is to know who are the kind of people that will be most attracted to you first. That's number one. So when you know that's number one. Number two, uh, what do those people that are going to be attracted to you, what are they going to be like? I mean, what are they attracted by, right? So depend on what's the nature of your business. Like Muhammad Ali, you're in consulting, right? You're in uh, NLP consulting. So when you're in NLP consulting, what will attract people to you is most probably are people that are probably around the same race with you. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the best, usually. Uh, and then also, you would like to help them understand and maybe they're dealing with some problems in their life. Like they've gone through traumas or meltdowns or inefficiencies in their life. And so what you do is, like, uh, what you do is you, 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 you share something that will enlighten them on your Facebook. So you share them uh, how do you overcome this? Like one strategy that you can do is to do something, is to do something. So you attract people to you to see you as someone credible, not because you have just, not because you just say something in your bio, in your 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 Facebook that you say, hey, I'm an expert at e-commerce and it, I'm an expert at NLP and people would think that you're an expert. No, you become an expert by adding value to people right now. Like what Mama Lee is doing, like when you go online and you go YouTube or you go on Facebook and you share something that allows your target audience to learn something. For example, someone has no confidence. Mm -hmm. So, so Muhammad Ali would start sharing in Pakistan language, right? And sharing people, okay, so when you have no confidence, when you are faced with a job loss, what can you do? Or when you are faced with a situation where you don't feel confident about yourself or you don't feel you. confident about your business, what do you do? And you share with them one strategy that helps them. And, or, or something that, you share with them something that will enlighten them. Like, oh, I didn't see things from this perspective. Mm -hmm. So you share something that makes you, makes them learn something from you. And that is magnetic. Because that makes them think, feel that you're an expert. And of course, they'll be attracted by you. It's like, for mm -hmm. example, if I give you a candy, not everybody loves candy. But whoever that loves candy, I give you a candy. And you take my candy and you're like, oh, that's nice. Now I want, so that, that makes you attract to me now, right now, because I have a candy. And you took mm -hmm. my, you tasted me. And now you, and you think, and you know that I'm attractive because you tasted me. So therefore you want more of me. So that makes me magnetic. So the way for you to become magnetic is really go out there and, and, and add value to people. Teach them something, help them something. Absolutely. And adding value is something which we, you know, I, I, I always tell people uh, that what we do nowadays is that we say, uh, why should I tell everything right now? And that is the biggest mistake. A lot of information is available online. I do not have any issues in sharing my knowledge online because people can even go to uh, any Tom, Dick and Harry and they can get the knowledge. If they get wrong knowledge, still they will get a knowledge. It's not about right or wrong. So yeah. why not me be there? And that's what I'm doing for the last many months now. It's almost a year now that I go live every almost three times a week minimum. And I share all the knowledge I have. Uh, because, and that's what people, uh, that's what makes, and people tell me, oh, you don't have big, uh, you know, uh, what do you call uh, likes and too many. I say, I don't care. My audience is amazing. I'm, I have the best audience in the world. You know why? Because my audience, even if it is 50 people at one given time and 200, 300, 1000 people watch my recordings, 
they are the ones who watch it from start till the end they don't leave me in the way in the midway and they are the ones who gain knowledge they are the ones who love knowledge so for me i am doing my job right yes, and that's what attracting I, that's the right what people yes exactly if if i have 10000 likes and not even one person stays on screen for one minute what is it good for yes and and now it comes to this a lot of people now uh talk about influencers right so this influencers has millions of likes do you know that a lot of people millions of likes but can't sell anything yes yeah when you share something they even make they don't even make a sale so now the world has changed it is not allowed it's the the person that makes the most money is not even the the big influencers actually it's actually the micro influencer When I say micro, that means they only have a base of maybe a thousand or ten thousand, a hundred thousand. But because these people feel close to you, they engage with you. They stay like what you say. They stay throughout your whole video. So it's not about it's not about the quantity of people that likes you. It's the number of the quality of the the number of quality of people that likes you and engage with you. That is that's what makes you successful. So so marketing marketing doesn't mean that you have millions of billions of followers. I mean. There are many people with millions of followers but they but when they post something to sell something they have very little sales because most of these people they have fleeting moment they don't stay with you they don't become your fan you know so so right now it's better that all of you become micro influencers so I talk to people about how to how they can become micro influencers you know in my in my other sharing and how can they do that by the way well first of all um I always tell people in life uh So see we are all in life for a short period in time. So this is my story, okay? This is my story. You can choose to accept or reject. That's up to you, okay? If you choose to accept, maybe it'll help you, all right? So for me, my point, my value in life has changed. I'm now living my purpose, a purpose-driven life. And what and I tell people to build purpose-driven businesses as well. So to me, uh what is how you can start influencing people right now to become a micro-influencer is first of all, you want to ask yourself what value can you bring to this world now where can you find the best value you can bring into this world so i always believe in this uh, if you do a business out of money right you won't see you won't see profits if you just focus on money you need to focus on solving people's pain okay yes. and how do you solve people's pain so i tell people this you're on earth here for like maybe a uh, 100 years you know it's it's a privilege you could live up to 100 <laughs> But even that it's just 100 years. That's it, you're gone. So do you think you're born into this world to just come into this world and just work work work, make money, family kids and then grow old, wait to be a grandfather and then wait and you just wait till you get disease and you die. I mean, is that what our law want for you? Is that what God want for you? I don't know. But I don't I don't think that's what my purpose is. It's not to just come here and live and die. That's it. <laughs> I believe that yes. there's a purpose why God or our law put us here on earth. And I believe the only thing that can last in humanity if we live. And by the way, you probably don't remember all your great grandfather's name. <laughs> all right? I don't think I even remember my great grandfather. I don't even know who my great grandfather is. I don't even remember his name. Like my children won't even know who's my grandfather. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right? So your name will be forgotten after two generation. Some of you do have no kids. one generation that's it once you're gone nobody remembers you you are like non existent anymore oh throughout humanity so then what is your purpose here your purpose here is to serve humanity and how do you serve humanity through your pain you see if you ask yourself what is the greatest pain that you have gone through in life it can be your career it can be in business it can be many things in your life it can be many things like you you could be a struggling writer right you want to know how to write you can do that so all of you have certain number of skills that you have and you have a pain trying to do well in those skills and you eventually did do well in those skills mm-hmm. then now you may feel that hey maybe there are other people on there out there right now who are going through the same pain as what you do and you can go to, and you can say hey you know what i'm going to help these people overcome the pain that right now they're experiencing that i used to experience So then That's that true. becomes that can become a business because now that is a business with a sense of purpose. You see, yep. you want to help people you help humanity get out of that pain that you went through. So I always tell you this, 
if there are pain in your life, like God put you through, Allah put you through that pain, there is a purpose. And if you if you get out of that alive and you did well out of that, you will find that will become your purpose to serve humanity. And for when you have purpose, purpose drives profits. So pain creates purpose and purpose creates profits. Amazing. Pain creates purpose and purpose creates profits. profits. That's uh, that's that's an amazing quote, uh, and I'm gonna steal it from you. Yes, uh, please do. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now, question, uh, Winston, and that is, uh, I start my online business. Where do I start from? I've done it's the purpose. I've done, <laughs> I've, I've, uh, yes, I've done the purpose. I have done uh, the. I found the solution. Now, how do I, uh, you know, actually go online and I start selling? What channels should I use? How do I know other than, uh, you know, like, uh, do I need to do advertising only? People think that advertising is the only way to uh, to do online business. Is that true? Well, okay, uh, yeah, advertising. You, it's, whether you're doing paid or free advertising, it's, you still need advertising. People need to know who are you, right? So you do still need to do advertising. There are paid ways. There are free ways. Uh, paid ways, of course, get you faster because you pay and they de definitely will give you visibility because you pay. Uh, mm -hmm. Free ways, you can get visibility as well, but you just have to do more manual work. Like when I did my blog, I could pay, I could do spend time writing a 500 word blog so that I can get ranked on Google or I just pay Google. Immediately, I would have people searching for it and you can see my website right at the top. Right? So you can choose both ways. Both ways works. Anyone, any ways that let people see you works. So the thing is, are you finding the right people that sees you? Mm -hmm. Right? Who you got? So you got to be clear who's your right audience. And a lot of times, in the beginning, uh, when you have no experience, it's really just go out and help people first. Just go out and add value. Like whatever values that you have, for example, you're passionate about clothing, you're passionate about shoes. You know, just ask yourself, where do you think people love to look at my shoes? And where do you think uh, I can find people who love shoes? Where do you think I can find people who love clothing? And, and go ask yourself and find it in Google groups, Facebook groups. You know, last time there used to be Google communities, but no more. So now you go Facebook groups, you know, uh, ask yourself, where are groups that you can experiment to see if there are people who likes what you like, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, who has a problem that, that you, you used to have. So you go in there and you just share your value, just add value to people. Like if you, you're good at, you're good at like, like shoes, you love shoes very much. So maybe you go to like join groups, find groups that have people who love shopping, who love shoes, and you go in there and you start talking about shoes. You start talking about why you love these shoes. And and, and basically when you start talking about it, you attract the right audience and the right audience will come by itself. And from there, you kind of will know, it will train your instinct to know like, okay, I can see that there's a certain group of people I'm observing and probably you are probably observing that. There's a certain group of people that you're observing right, in your NLP business that this group of people are constantly following me and I can see it's a specific kind of group of people and then when you can see that pattern, then now you become smarter and you're like, okay, how can I go and reach out to more of these people? And what, what you do is you do the same thing. You just go and add value. You know, instead of selling, you add value to people first. And when you add value, you're, you're, you're selling you, right? So yes, when you yes. sell, people buy you first before they buy your products. See, people buy Muhammad Ali. I buy into you first before I want to like, I want to hire you to be my coach because because I, I heard so much from you. I learned so much from you and I, I feel like you're my mentor, right? And I, I'm like, you know what? I need your coaching because I need you to help me solve my problem. I know you That's can do it. I've already learned so much from you. I know you, you have the solutions. I just feel that I need that help. <laughs> Absolutely. That's that's a, that's an amazing tip. And uh, uh, Vincent, uh, your business, uh, would you like to share the name of your business with my uh, audience so that they can also go and do and what, what does your business do really? Well, my, my okay, my current, I so several, I'm an entrepreneur, so I have several businesses. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I do have, uh, my brother, my brother has restaurants in Singapore as well, uh, and a few mm -hmm. retail shops that are doing men's clothing. It's called uh, Benjamin Barker. Um, mm -hmm. That's one. And I also have a training where I, I train people how to brand themselves, build branding, how to like become Amazon bestsellers. Number one, mm -hmm. that's part of branding. And how do you how do you structure your a lot of people give value, but they don't know how to structure it. So I struck help them structure a plan 
so that every day, every hour, they know what to put out, like to the hour. So some people need very specific instructions. So I had to plan out for them. Uh, but these are people that already like know me well, and they already have you know uh, existing business. And uh, I don't go for people who just got started. People who just got started, I, I don't have a business for. You. I don't have a solution for that, because at least. But my only solution is I'll probably recommend you some books. There's a book that's quite pretty good if you guys want to, if you guys want to build a real business fast. Uh, there's a book that I recommend. It's called Fast Lane Millionaire. Uh, I have a copy of the book, and you can find the YouTube audio book actually. It's called Fast Lane Millionaire. Yeah, it's it's a pretty good book. Uh, that you can start with that. So this, is, so I help people existing business how to scale their business, uh, on online. That's one, and uh, that's my business is called uh, purposedrivenboss.com. So how do you turn that find use the business and make a purpose out of that? So it's called purposedrivenboss.com. So that's one. And and this is the book name. Am I right? Fastly Millionaire. That's right. Yeah, this is the book for people who are just starting out. And and you said that uh, your business name is Purpose Driven Boss. Yeah, Purpose Driven Boss. That's right. So I, I've taken website? that now. I've stopped that right now for for because when I take on a client, I had to make sure the person succeeds. So I decided to take a break. So I stopped accepting clients already. <laughs> so I want to. I want. I need. A, I want a break. So, but uh, but other than that, I also have an e-commerce business that grows by itself. So I also show people how to. So I find partners right now to who want to build an e-commerce that can grow by itself. So I run partnerships instead of coaching people now. Uh, that would, in the long term, I find that that's better return through partnerships. So I partner with people using my experience to help them grow an e-commerce business that can grow by itself. So I have that. And that's my current project uh, that I'm doing. Uh, and, so, and if somebody if somebody wants to be your partner, what do we, what do they need to do? So I do need to interview them because it's long-term partnership. It's not a, I don't sell courses so I don't, that's not coaching, right? That's a mm -hmm. partnership. So partnership, I will actually make sure that it's a good fit. I will have to make sure that you have the right frame of mind. <laughs> that you, I, I have to make sure that you tell the same stories the same way. I tell my same stories because we are on the same direction. Because if you have a different story, later on, um, I might have issues because I, I have had bad partnerships. So I don't want to go through that that partnership it has got me wiser so i don't need to qualify people <laughs> to, become, to do partnerships right uh, so, there's a question for you what is more effective in terms of getting orders on social media ad copy and script image catchy video or offer oh well, that's a lot that's <laughs> that's, that's a, wow that's what i said wow yeah, that's he wants most to get orders there. on social media at the end of the day the social media is targeting is the most important is not your ad copy or your script or your image or your catchy video or your offer the the right, the right audience is, is, are you targeting the right audience? That's the first part. Getting to the right audience, that's the first part. It's not even, there's no like, uh, what is more effective? There's no like copy or image or script. Although I do want to say, uh, add copy, the first line of words, you only have, just think about it, okay? When you go online right now, everybody's attention span is so short. You only have three seconds. So ask yourself, if you're going to sell something online, you only have three seconds. What, what would capture your attention first? Three seconds. What is it? Your headline and your image. Yes. Yeah, your That's headline. Nice. Even if it's video, it's the first moving, first few seconds, first three seconds of a moving video. You only have three seconds to get attention. Wow. So three seconds, either you are done or you are doomed. Yeah, either you, you, are, you can think it that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you only have three seconds. So ask yourself, whatever you post online, you only have three seconds. Uh, so yeah, okay. Uh, so Vincent, uh, this this uh, going back to your initial one, uh, Sultan. I think you've got an answer to that one. That you have to put whatever you have to put. You have to make it in a way that it is three second attractive. Three seconds. That's it. <laughs> right. You so, ask yourself um, if you browse, you're browsing, and you saw your ad. You know, you only have three seconds. One, two, three. Oh no, I've seen this before. Oh, no. I'm <laughs> absolutely in fact i think uh, while you are browsing it's not even three seconds probably sometimes less than that you just quickly browse and if something is attractive you stop and come yeah, back and then spend three seconds in fact i you know you may want to go in one second <laughs> yes absolutely okay so uh based on your uh we are coming towards the you know i, I told you half an hour but we already i've already taken an hour from you and that <laughs> was uh, I, and i believe with you i can continue for maybe another 10 hours and it will going to be the <laughs> most interesting talk we'll have uh, but uh towards the end i would like you to give uh you know some advice for my audience 
uh, uh, I know you've given a lot already in terms of advices, but still, uh, for those who are joining in later or who are joining in now, what would be your uh, piece of advice for them in three things? Number one, in life. Number two, in business. And number three, when they earn money. Well, first, life. Believe uh, in God. Before that, <laughs> before that before, yeah, believe in God. That's uh, Believe that's, yeah. that God is for you. Believe that God loves you. Like the mantra, right? He loves you yeah. 70 times more than your mom. <laughs> that's correct. That's so if correct. you believe that, whatever problems you're going through in life, you know that he's still there with you. He still loves you, okay? Even if you think nobody else in the world loves you, he's, he still loves you. <laughs> he's, he's created you to love and he loves you the most. There's no yes, doubt about it. Yes, he loves you the most. So don't, 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 don't get discouraged. He's with you. I mean, he owns the world. He is, he's, uh, owns the universe, right? So if he's with you, you know, tell yourself, take comfort that he's with you. Maybe you need to read the Bible again to, list, to, to read the stories on how he has helped all the people that, you know, that were in trouble and, and he has helped everyone get out of bad, bad stuff. It, even if people that, like King David, I don't know, you guys in Quran, right? Yes. What, what do you call David? King David, Daud. what do you call? Dawood. Dawood, yeah. Dawood. See, Dawood did committed a very bad crime. He murdered someone's husband, Bathsheba. He took the wife. Remember the story? Yes, he yes, the wife. yes. He sent the husband to war to kill the husband. That's evil. But still, later on, you know, Ab Law still forgive him because he repented. And Ab Law make him become a, you know, even better king. That's right. Right? But he had to go through that to learn to become a better king. Which is very, very important that we, as, as I said that, <clears throat> uh, uh, Napoleon said that every diversity comes with a seed of an equal or better opportunity. Yes. You know, so. and, and God sometimes needs us to go through an adversity in life because he knows that that will make you wiser. So you know, you, I'll tell you. Sorry, sorry, please go ahead, go ahead. Yes. Anyway, yeah, that's it. I want to say for life. Yes. Yeah, I will. I will tell you one thing very interesting. You know, when I lost all uh, all those eight million dollars, um, I realized that one thing at that time: things that were taking me away from God, God took the things away from me. This was my reframe. Okay, mm. that if I had that money, I probably would have been a, a, a more devilish person. I would say. But because, and that would have taken me away from God. So God took that away from me so that I can come back to God. You know, uh, before we move forward, there are two questions for you. One is that uh, he said, I did attractive to keep audience, stay on my content. And then the real story starts. And then he says, how to find the right audience fast. There is nothing fast uh, other than the fasting in Ramadan, my dear. So, <laughs> uh, so how to find the right audience fast before you go with the, uh, with the advice uh, for business and uh, once you get money. Okay, so this relates to your second question, business advice. Yes, Okay, that's right. So first of all, uh, anything that you learn in life, anything, everything that you learn in life, okay? Like including learning how to walk. How do you learn how to walk fast? Tell me. Practice. Yep. Uh, let, let me tell you this. Will you fail? No. Have you ever learned to walk and you fall down? Yes, Obviously. many times. <laughs> Every person. Many, Have you many ever times. Have you learned how to ride a bike and you fall, fell down? Yeah, of course, many 100%. times. Everything that you ever learned in life that you have no experience, you will fall. You can read, you can read a thousand books on learning how to walk and if you never walked before, you would still fall. <laughs> you can read a thousand books and watch a thousand videos on how to like uh, ride a bike, but you've never written a bike before. You ride it, even after after reading one thousand books, you ride it, you still fall. Absolutely. So one thing you cannot avoid in in life is you cannot avoid failing. So your questions about how to get fast is to fail fast. <laughs> the faster you fail, the better you become. Yes, because the faster you will fail, then you realize, oh, what is the right audience? Oh, this is not the right audience. This is the right audience. So to know whether which is the right audience for you, first, you start with going out there to just put out whatever that you have first and, uh, and, and uh, put out value, you know, share your love, 
share your pain, go out and how you solve your pain, and uh, you know, share what you enjoy sharing, you know, and see where your target and guess where your target on are. So you go out. I I guarantee you, every failure you make, if you have this mindset, it's going to make you wiser. Then you're going to embrace all failures. When you embrace all failures, you become smart very fast. So you want to get results fast. You fail fast. All right. So if you want to learn how to ride a bike for the first time, you want to ride fast and learn fast. What do you do? You just keep riding. Spend it. Keep trying. Just keep trying. Just keep trying. I, I guarantee you. After you keep trying, after a while, you will get it. Because you will realize that I shouldn't have balanced too much this way. I shouldn't have balanced too much that way. I should have just used my leg to kick uh, and press forward. You will discover it along the way. You will discover it. <laughs> we're made. We're made to know how to find a solution. We're made to do that. God already gave us the ability to do that. So, how do you find your audience fast? Go out, go out and use what you currently think it might be your target audience first. You guess first. Just go out and do it first, and you will learn. You will know. Absolutely, and this is this is very, 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 very critical. That unless you do it, you will never learn. Yep. Unless you do it, you can read books, you can attend courses, you can do anything you want until you do it. You're not gonna get it. You're not gonna get it. Yesterday, somebody called me. He said, "I want to learn." Uh, he has done NLP practitioner. He has done NLP master practitioner. He has done uh, NLP applications of NLP. So yep. he wants to go for a course on coaching uh, in NLP. So I said, uh, and all these three courses he have done. He has done within a span of uh, two months. So I told him, my dear, you don't need to do any more courses. No, 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 no. But if I don't learn coaching separately, I will. I said, no, you don't need to do any more courses. All you need to do is start practicing what you have learned. So wait for one year, practice, practice, and if you still feel you need to do a course in coaching, be my guest. I don't mind getting money from you. However, I don't want to just take your money and give you information which you're not gonna use. You know, so exactly. it's not about. Yeah. So I said my right advice is yes, I like your money. If you have extra money, give it to me. But I'm not gonna conduct a course for you. I'm not gonna let you sit there. Uh, by the way, Sultan has a message. One day, um, Emily, I want to invite me in this show. Inshallah, <laughs> sure, <laughs> Sultan, you can definitely be my guest. You will be my right audience. But tell, I need to know more about you, Sultan, as uh, Winston said also. So if you can, uh, you have my WhatsApp number on the screen. Feel free to go, uh, contact me, and uh, we'll definitely uh, would love to invite you. Why not? I always like good people to be on my shows, isn't it? Great. And uh, the last advice, uh, Winston, which is when you get where you want to be, then what you do? Well, I, for me right now, I, I, I don't have a destination. I, I just, I'm, every day, I'm just living out my purpose. So find your purpose. That is the most important thing, viewers. Yeah, Once you me, know your purpose, then you will find that there is no destination. Purpose is giving the best isn't it yeah. what do you how do you, how do you define purpose pain <laughs> so whatever you've gone through in your life you want to help humanity ele elevate the pain that you used to have that that makes that creates your purpose and and viewers let me tell you one thing before i thank winston for this uh, you know eye opener and mind opener kind of a uh, talk uh, let me tell you one thing i didn't know Win Win winston he was on my Facebook. One day I got a message from somebody. Oh, you should do X, Y, Z. You're doing great job, but you know, you should do. I said, why would somebody tell me these things and that also free? Of course, so I asked him, I said, Winston, do you want to sell me anything? And he said, no, I'm not going to sell you anything. I'm going to tell you, just guide you. I said, but why would you want to do that? And this is very, very important. Two things. One of the biggest problems in this world today is I don't trust myself, so I don't trust anyone. So there are good people around in the world who who find who understood their purpose of life and they are actually you know working towards achieving that purpose and that for me people like Winston and me probably the purpose is to give more than take because taking is everybody is ready for that giving is something which we need to give back as much as we can isn't it Winston? And that's what our law teach as well. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Absolutely, and it's then, the then exactly. Exactly, and that's what God only gives. He doesn't receive anything back. And if yeah, he, he doesn't need. Wrong, he just give and give and give. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. 
Thank you very much, Winston. This was an amazing, amazing show, more than what I had envisioned. And uh, probably you. I'll be, based on the audience response, as well as on my own learning, I would be bothering you a few times more in the in, in the near future. Um, yeah, thank you so we'll... much for having me, Muhammad Ali. It's a, it's an honor and a privilege. And I I want to thank God, right? So, you know, God is great. God is yes, great. God Allah is great. <laughs> God is great, and He is the greatest, and and He has created the most beautiful creations, you know, like you and me, yes. people out in the world, and yes. that's why I, that's what I tell everyone: if you don't love yourself, you cannot love your God. So you need to love yourself first. Yes. So very. Yep. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you once again, guys. dear. See you. See you guys. Cheers, Bye. Sir. Bye. Ciao.